Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel and today we are taking a look at this. This is the VPC Rotor TCS Plus Base with the 60 Hawk Grip. This is a collective setup for all of your helicopter needs and let me tell you guys, this is an absolute amazing game changer and I cannot wait to share this with you guys. Today we're going to go over the installation, configuration and use of this amazing collective. Stick around. If you are interested in acquiring any of my Overkill's tutorial guides or simply interested in supporting the channel, please consider joining me on Patreon. Patreon subscribers level tier 2 and above have access to all of my guides as well as any future guides that come along down the road. Patreon link can be found in the description below and thank you to all of my current subscribers. All right, guys, so we will start with a very simple unboxing. I love the way Verpal uh, packages all of their stuff. So I keep this one pretty simple today. It's just a matter of pulling it out of the bags and, and showing you guys what's in it, really. Uh, but the biggest thing about Verpal is all of their stuff is, is very, very high quality. Um, the biggest thing to know about it is, yes, their stuff is expensive, but I promise when you see all the different configuration, customization options, and the ease of use with their products, you're going to find the benefit very, very quickly. I will tell you that their collective is one of the best that I've seen on the market. I have had a chance in the past to check out some other collectives, um, not me personally owning them, but being able to check them out at uh, other locations. And I have been the most impressed with theirs. The biggest thing that I like about the Verpal setups in general is that they separate the grip from the base. That way you can swap out. Verpal has this one here, which is the 60 Hawk, which is a... Uh, very close replica, not one-to-one, -one, but very close replica to the UH-60 Blackhawk. They also have one that is very, very similar, even with the Russian writing, to the KA-50. Um, now, obviously, you guys, these grips are going to shine the most in things like DCS World, and you guys are going to see a little bit of that today. We're going to see DCS World as well as the use in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Um, but this is where it really starts to get very, very interesting, is where we start getting into the collective base itself. The base has both a power source as well as a USB connection, so you will need to be considerate of two USB ports being used. Again, one for power, one for data. Um, but the overall configuration of it, guys, was so very simple. I was so thoroughly impressed. Now, with much of their products, you also have the ability to change out things like cams, increase tension, decrease tension, as well as change mounting points. They do have a desk chair mounting option. I do not show that today. I did not ask for that as I was mounting it directly to my next level racing cockpit, which I will be showing you guys towards the end of the video. Again, you guys are going to see everything from start to finish. One of the things that I really enjoy about the Verpal base mounting plate is it can be rotated. You can actually change the angle and I will show you guys that here in a minute. As you guys see this video here, if you guys take a look at that mounting plate that I'm holding with my right hand, pay attention to its uh, overall indexing there because I change it when we get over to the cockpit. Um, I actually reversed it, so made it out quite a bit longer. Um, so it sits up higher but less distance away from the seat. The tension on it right out of the box is very, very stiff, and I was very, very impressed with that. You definitely have to have this thing mounted, but it opens up a ton of customization options as to how you want to mount it. You can mount this again to a desk chair. You can mount it to a cockpit. You can build a separate stand for it. There are all kinds of different options and opportunities. The throttle grip is freaking awesome, you guys. It actually has the cutoff switch up, up on top. You can see me pushing with my thumb. It actually has a detent that locks it in place. You have to depress it. And the neat, neat thing is, is that button is actually a button. So it has its own electronic input if you want to use it for like a throttle cutoff found in something, for example, like the U, uh, UH-1 Huey uh, found in DCS World. Uh, that uh, throttle cutoff is actually mapped or mappable, I should say, within inside of the control configurations. So there's a ton of, of uh, option here. The throttle input is very, very smooth. There's no play in it. There's no wiggle. There's no jiggle. Everything is very, very night and tight. Um, and I was just thoroughly impressed with all of it. And again, Verpal is, is definitely no stranger to high quality products. So I really wasn't expecting much else. And I was super, super excited for this one. I have been using a standard throttle for a very, very long time, you guys. Um, just 
to run my helicopters. And I was perfectly content with it until I really started getting into the whole cockpit building and really decided, man, I really want to check it out, what it's like to fly with a collective. And boy, was I thrilled to death. And I cannot wait to show you guys towards the end of the video. Here are the three different cams. There's a cam that's already in it. And then there are two cams that come inside of it. Um, now you have the option, I believe is 30, 40, and 50 degrees of play. We end up swapping the cam out for the 40. The 30 is pre-installed and the uh, 40 and 50 are what uh, we have to put into it later on. So here, what we're going to do first is we're going to change out the cam. Okay. I want the uh, longer range of play. I didn't quite want the 50. The 50 was a bit too high for what I was looking for. Uh, 40 degrees I felt was going to be rather nice. And it's got no center detent. Obviously you wouldn't find that in a collective. Um, so it's just one smooth uh, arc that you guys can see here. Now, taking a look at the cams, you guys can sort of see the difference there. I did my best to sort of give you guys an example there, but here's the one where we're going to be uh, putting into the cockpit. So you guys can see how those detents sort of change quite a bit. You can see the different motion and play there as we line them up side by side. It has a slightly lo longer angle on it, again, which gives you just a bit more play. Remember, you're talking about that full length, which the whole thing from start to finish, I would say, is probably right around 18 inches long, somewhere give or take, uh, from the bottom of the base to the tip of the grip. Now, we're going to pull these back screws off the uh, rear plate here in order to get to the cam, as well as that center screw that holds the, uh, the main rotor in. You guys can see here we're using a 2.5 millimeter on the Allen keys. I do recommend using you guys' own set. Um, it's always nicer than using the real tiny ones. Um, I recommend if you guys are going to be getting Verbal products, buy a, a set of these T sets. They come in handy. You're going to be using them uh, pretty often, especially in the beginning as you start playing around with different configurations, cams, tension. You're going to be adjusting them quite a bit in the beginning until you find that sweet spot where you really like it. Process of removal, again, very, very simple. And the thing that I love about it is there's never, I never find any binding points on any of their products. The screws are always just very, very nicely machined and everything just comes out smooth as glass each time. I've used multiple products now. I have the CM53 uh, base or the 50CM3 base, I think it is. Um, I have the uh, CM3 throttle and I've taken both of them apart. I've done previous videos on those as well. Uh, the the uh, anti-torque rudder pedals, same thing. Just every time I go to use these, I never find any problems with manufacturing, never see any issue with anything binding, with screws holes not lining up or any kind of tension points. Everything is just always machined very, very nicely. One of the other things that you got to remember about them is that they also all come with a uh, QR scanner code. Basically, you just put your camera over and it takes you directly to the instructions of the device that you're trying to uh, manipulate. So now we're just going to take the center screw out and that'll give us access to the cam. And this is going to be a number five. Now I don't actually show it later on here, but on the opposite side, there's a screw of similar size and then four more screws. You would remove those in order to remove that mounting plate and switch it around. And it's got the similar bolt pattern on the other end of it. You guys can sort of see the cam buried back there behind there on the bottom, right behind the wires there. And you guys are going to see the process here in just a second, but you guys can see those two screws right there. That's where we're going to be uh, removing the cam out. So again, easy process. You would think that it's more difficult than it is, but it's really not. Very, very simple to get into. I did the same thing when I was doing my CM3 base for the uh, flight stick. So we'll just set these aside. And this whole process, I mean, you guys are seeing it all in real time, doesn't take very long at all. Unless you have big fingers like me and you keep dropping the screw inside of it, but even then we overcame that, conquered and overcame. Seeing the cam out sort of ended up just turning it upside down, letting it fall out. Now she comes, we're going to grab our replacement. She 
sure we get the orientation correct. And again, you guys can see that angle difference in each of one of the pieces here. And so we're going to grab the 40. And everything slides right into place. That's the other thing that I love about it. It's very, very easy to reorient all the pieces. It takes almost no time at all. Now you guys will probably have an even easier time with this because you won't be trying to keep it in front of a camera and hold it up and get your views and everything right. But very, very simple process. Absolutely no time at all for this. And I love that there are no plastic parts. I mean, you got nothing plastic inside of there. All of the actuation is all metal to metal. And I just give it till it's tight and then another quarter turn, nothing crazy. Again, we're not having to hold down a transmission or anything like that. Just finger tight with a little bit of extra. And now we just put the center base back on. Keep in mind the notches that it has on it. it has a groove that it slides between these two uh, rails. Bring it down and again, same thing. Just a finger tight with a little bit of extra. And then we'll just put all of our mounting plate screws back on or our base plate screws back on. Give them all a quick spin down. It's really weird trying to do this while holding it up in the camera. And that black plug down there at the bottom there, right next to my hand, that is where we would increase or decrease the tension. I actually don't end up doing that because I was actually perfectly happy with where it was. But I wouldn't recommend playing around with that until you have it mounted where you want it to see if it actually sags or not. Good way to test that is when you lift it up, does it start falling back down? If it does, you probably want to tighten that up just a little bit, but nothing too crazy. But you've got two tension points there. You've got one on top, one on bottom. And now you guys can see what I was talking about with the mounting plate, how I reoriented it. So now it's sitting upright, but we have it attached to my next level racing cockpit. And boy, it looks absolutely fantastic on it. I have been so thoroughly impressed with the way that this thing came out. Feels good in the hand. Having it all powered on, all the lights coming on and things like that was just so cool to see it. You guys will be able to see it here in just a second, holding its position in the, in the uh, full upright. I mean, it is really, really slick looking. I love the material they used. It is a plastic material, but it feels very, very good in the hand. 
The only thing that I would say that I actually dislike is the trigger. It does have a gray trigger on the bottom of it, and that feels a little too plasticky for me. Um, I wish they had done something a little bit different with the trigger on this one. Uh, the trigger, I mean, right down to the depression of the button feels a little cheapy. Um, but that is the only thing that I can say about about that in regard to feeling cheap or, or less of quality. Um, but uh, everything else is absolutely phenomenal. I love all the buttons, all the hats and options that are on it, and the configuration of it is just as simple. Speaking of the configuration, let's go ahead and jump into that. All right, so jumping into the configuration, this part is relatively easy. You're gonna start with your VPC configuration tool. You're going to select the VPC Rotor TCS base, go to your firmware. Now, if you're plugging it in for the first time, you probably already got a red box that looks like this. And this is telling you that you need to update the firmware. So we're just gonna hit okay. It walks through seven steps, can take a couple of minutes depending on you know your computer's processing, internet speed, all that good jazz. But all in all, it is very, very simple to do. So we're gonna let the firmware update and then we'll move on to the next part. I'm gonna keep everything in real time, you guys. I'm not gonna skip anything, so that way you guys get a full idea of what to expect as you go through the process. The configuration tool can be a little bit daunting, it can be a little bit overwhelming, but trust me, there aren't near as many things that you have to do from the start as you would think. You will see the device disconnect and reconnect as the firmware process is completed. And there it is. You can see there on the left hand side, the TCS base is already selected. If yours is not selected, and then we're going to select the 60 grip or whichever grip you end up purchasing for yourself. And then we need to come down and hit create profile. Getting close. Next thing we need to do is we need to calibrate the axis. So we're gonna move over to the left-hand side and select the axis tab. Down at the bottom right, select calibrate axis. And simply move through the range of motion on both the collective and the throttle. So there's collective full up, collective full down, and then again, doing the exact same thing for the throttle. and then go back the other direction. And then select save calibration to profile in the bottom right. Last thing you need to do is select save VPC device up at the top. Now, if you want to test it to verify that Windows has it recognized and that you are cleared to start binding your keys and enjoying it in your favorite simulator helicopter, you can go down to Windows joysticks in the bottom left once the save process is complete and you see the device return to the list. So let's select Windows joysticks. Mine popped up on a different monitor, so give me just a second. And there it is. I want to scroll down until we find our throttle or our helicopter. Let's go to properties. And again, popped up on a different window. And take note of the smooth motion, how smooth it moves. No stuttering or, or jolting or bouncing as we move through the different access points. Very smooth, very precise. I was super excited to see that. And then obviously you can also feel free to test all of your different buttons, hats, switches, triggers, lights, etc. But at this point, you're just about done with the, uh, well, you are done with the configuration as far as the device goes, and you no longer need the software.
So we will go ahead and close the software out. And now we will start with Microsoft Flight Simulator. Simply select OK, close the software, and let the fun begin. After you've bound your collective access to Microsoft Flight Simulator, unfortunately the throttle can't be bound yet. That is a limitation of Microsoft Flight Simulator and not of the joystick, or I should say of the collective. In Microsoft Flight Simulator, you guys, it was a night and day difference. Keep in mind, I'm also using the anti-torque rudder pedals. So you have a full helicopter configuration here. I never had this much trouble flying uh, when I was just using a standard throttle, which lets me know it was a true game changer. It absolutely was something that I had to really process. I had to get my mind into the aspect of the fact that you no longer push the throttle forward to gain a uh, vertical lift and had to really start triggering my brain into up is up, down is down. But it became very, very apparent very, very quickly that I was going to love having a collective. There are certain things that as I began to do uh, with this, uh, became significantly easier to understand and for my brain to process. One of the things that we're about to go do right now is we're going to go orbit the Statue of Liberty. And uh, this was something that uh, I used to struggle with, and I don't know why. And I don't know why the collective made such a big difference, and with that in conjunction with the anti-torque rudder pedals, but everything was significantly easier to process what I wanted the helicopter to do. And I think I uh, I understand that, that I have read comments before in the past about people saying, no, no, you have to have a collective. You'll understand when you get a collective. And I never understood the big deal. I, I didn't understand like power is power. You know, it doesn't matter which axis it's coming from. Who cares if it's coming from the throttle or from an actual collective until I'm sitting here doing this. I found this to be much, much easier to maintain. There was something about the association between collective position and the helicopter wanting to stay where it was or if I wanted to go higher or lower, where the throttle axis was very much so about power. And this isn't about power as much as it's about lift and understanding that connection between lifting the collective up and getting more lift out of the helicopter and bringing it down. Now, at the same token, there are certain points where I found this also to be very confusing, primarily for whatever reason at landing, which you guys are going to see. My landing in this particular helicopter was terrifying. Um, it wasn't the worst landing I've done, but it definitely threw me for a loop that I wasn't anticipating. And it was just a different process. Um, I don't know what was so different about it, but you guys will get an idea here. There were a couple times where I got very, very low, much too fast. And then for whatever reason, in a, a attempt to correct, I wanted to push the collective down further rather than lift it back up. And I'm not sure where my brain was. So I will promise you that there is definitely a mental switch that happens that is both confusing frustrating and yet very exciting right there, right? There is part of it where I was just like, whoa, whoa, wrong way, wrong way. You know, I knew that I was descending faster than I wanted to. And for whatever reason, I pushed the collective down instead of bringing it up. And I think, again, it comes to that push motion that I've gotten so used to with using a throttle. Um, but all in all, I wanted to hit the landing spot. But as you guys can see here, I really thunked it down very hard. Uh, so it definitely wasn't one of my favorites. However, in DCS world, this was a heck of a lot more fun. Now, you guys are going to get some game audio with this as well. Um, unfortunately, with Microsoft Flight Simulator, I wasn't paying attention and the game audio was not set to record. Now, I bound everything that I needed to bind in order to start the UH-1 here. And boy, this was a heck of a lot more fun and much more realistic for me. It really changed the immersive nature of flying this particular helicopter. Now, the DCS World UH-1, I think, is still far superior when it comes to flight dynamics, performance, and just the overall experience than anything that we currently have in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Um, but I don't think that that's something that's necessarily uh, a limitation of one developer versus the other. But here's where this is cool. Now, I still had to crack the throttle. I haven't figured out how to set that part up yet where the throttle lock would work. And I wanted to show you guys this video. So that's just a customization option that I have to figure out. But here I am holding the start switch button monitoring the engine RPMs there, and this was a lot of fun. So I haven't added any throttle yet. Watching that starter, we're looking for about 20% on the RPMs there. You can see the rotor starting to rotate in the shadow there in the top left, and here they're coming on the canopy. And this part gets really cool, because here I actually had to use the throttle, which again, really made it shine. 
There I am, slowly starting to add the throttle, trying to match the rotor speed with the engine speed. Not trying to increase it too quickly, but trying to increase as the RPMs do, trying to keep them spinning at right about the same speed. If you let one overtake the other, or you add too much throttle, you can actually damage the prop. So there we are at max power there. We're going to get the doors closed on the Huey. And let's go for a flight. And this was a ton of fun. Gosh, I had so much fun in this thing. Now, the Huey is by far and has been for a very long time my favorite aircraft in DCS world. There's just something about it, especially when you get into virtual reality with it, scraping those treetops, getting into VR, and then having this collective now on anti-torque rudder pedals just truly changed the game for me. Now, this was actually filmed here in 2D for you guys' benefit, um, as I haven't figured out quite how to get VR uh, recording nicely, um, but immediately... One of the things that I've always struggled with in this was just being able to do the simple lift hover test with it. And this was one of the best ones that I've ever done in the Huey. Still didn't quite match where I was looking for. But again, the sense of lift is so much finer using a collective than a throttle. The process and, and mental association really makes a huge difference. And I never thought it was going to. That's why I waited so long. It was never really an interest. I mean, I always thought they were cool, but it was never one of those things that I felt I had to have in order to truly enjoy the helicopter experience. Knowing what I know now, I wonder how much more enjoyment I would have gotten out of these helicopters and how much more proficient I could have been had I had the right tools for the right job. And I think that's the best way to describe this. It truly is about having the right tools for the right job. Maintaining control of the helicopter was significantly easier than it ever was with the throttle. I think part of that comes down to the throw being much, much longer. The range of motion with the collective is significantly longer than the range of motion that you have with a standard throttle. So getting those finite corrections was much easier for me to obtain. I would never feel comfortable going into the flyby view in DCS world in the UH-1. As you can see, my hands are completely off the controls there, and I was just letting it do its thing, and for the most part, it maintained its position. Obviously, I still had to adjust cyclic input as I was changing the views, but still, this low to the ground, if I ever tried that before, I guarantee those skids would have been bouncing across that pavement like it was going through a hockey rink. Um, so it was much, much smoother, and I felt much more comfortable and much more in control of the helicopter than I ever have before. The game change experience was far surpassing what my expectations were. You guys, I did not come into this with the expectation of thinking that it was going to be a night and day difference, and I was wrong. Uh, this added so much to my helicopter experience. It added so much to the simulator. Um, and I haven't even gotten a chance yet to map around all of my buttons yet. I cannot wait to add things like the searchlight, the landing lights, the beacon lights, the uh, carrying hook, uh, the tow hook that you can now fall under. DCS World does map all of these things. The other one that I'm really excited to take advantage of this helicopter collective in the grip is going to be the uh, Hype Performance Group H145 with the Action Pack. They have the ability to map just about anything you want in it. But watch how easily I was able to maintain the helicopter simply using ground effect. I used almost no collective lift and was able to just fly the helicopter right out of it while maintaining power. Didn't add power until I wanted to and it was just very, very smooth for me. It was such a fun experience. I was super blown away with this. I'm just gonna let you guys sort of ride out and just watch for a minute and just soak up the view. That was me recentering my view. I have to add that to it as well. I think I'm just going to put that on the trigger. And if you guys have not tried out the Huey in DCS World, I really recommend it. You do not have to do combat in DCS World. You can create your own missions where you're strictly doing transport, troop transport. And here I got a little close to the ground. That was uh, flirting with fire there. <laughs> but again, as I told you guys a moment ago, with the uh, Huey, I really like to get down low and, and, and scary with it. The 
We just take it for a quick circuit here, and then I bring it back in for another landing, and I had a much better landing experience in the Huey than I did with the 206 in Microsoft Flight Simulator. I will definitely say that because of all the features and key map uh, ability that exists in DCS World, it definitely makes the product shine significantly more. But I think as time goes on and Microsoft Flight Simulator con continues to mature its mapping options, we're going to see that separation uh, close up quite a bit. Obviously, with the rotor community definitely increasing as well in Microsoft Flight Simulator, that advantage of having the collective and the different grips are going to shine as well. But for right now, I would absolutely say that the experience is greatly uh, enhanced in DCS World in, in, in uh, comparison to Microsoft Flight Simulator. Microsoft Flight Simulator, as I stated, I still had far more control over the uh, overall aircraft's performance and the collective itself than I ever had before, and I definitely don't regret having that. And from now on, I will never be flying a helicopter without the use of the collective, whether it be Microsoft Flight Simulator or DCS World. But DCS World obviously had the features that Microsoft Flight Simulator doesn't yet. Um, but again, we're going to see what that comparison looks like when we get into things like the H-145 Action Pack, where I will definitely be showing you guys the advantages of having this collective and having the grip and all of its functionality. Now we're just going to take a quick circle in and land the helicopter once again. You guys are going to see here once again that I do uh, sort of get a little too comfortable with the collective and almost got myself in a sticky situation here. But I was again able to correct rather quickly comes right about here start getting a little too low a little too fast and there's that sink rate that really almost got ahead of me at the last second I was able to get some lift back almost put myself into a sticky spot there But again, landing the helicopter here, I felt like I had much more control, had a much better understanding, and was really starting to get comfortable with it. But I can tell you right now, you guys, my final thoughts on this is it is an absolutely amazing product with very clear and well-defined customization options for just about any user in any mounting points that you're looking for. Remember, it does have a desk chair option as well if you're looking for something like that. But what I really enjoy is the ability to swap out the cams, to increase or decrease the tension at will, to change out the grips based on which helicopter you're flying in with a simple change of a profile, you'll be off into the races very, very quickly. I am very, very grateful for Verpal and giving me the opportunity to review this particular product. I hope you guys enjoy it. As always, stay safe and healthy. I'll see you in the next one.